UI design is primarily flat, but I think it's really good to have a little bit of graphics design skills so you can push those UI designs to the next level. This is why exercises like the one that I'm going to show you are worth doing even if you're not planning to be an illustrator. Understanding how the light, shadow and depth works and how you can replicate it using some simple techniques like inner shadows, outer shadows and blurred overlays is a really good skill to help you design awesome hero sections for both apps and websites. Being able to do some of that stuff yourself is a perfect way to stand out. Today we're gonna be recreating the Nintendo Switch in Sketch, but of course if you're using Figma XD, Penpot, Lunacy or anything else you'll be able to follow along because I'm just gonna be using a couple of basic tools and shapes that are practically the same in every one of those apps. Let's go! So this is going to be a pretty simple exercise and we might not even do the entire thing, but I want to show you a couple of tricks and techniques to replicate some real world objects. So let's start by creating the left controller here. So I'm going to start by making a rectangle, basically the size of it. Then press enter and select just the two corners on the side here and then simply round them until they match what's underneath. And if you want, you can actually change the corner types to smooth. It's gonna look a little bit better, maybe not exactly as in the original device, but it's simply just gonna look better. So yeah, let's do it. Now here's the thing, let's turn off the border and let's replicate the shape itself. So I'm just gonna pick the color for it first and yeah, it's already perfect, right? So we should just leave it like that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is to create a little shadow over here. And as you can see, that shadow is a little bit bigger at the bottom and then it kind of fades on the side a little bit and ends around here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into the pen tool and I'm going to create a line like this, just kind of going here around the bottom part. And I'm going to make that line black. Now let's make it a little bit thicker maybe something like this. And it doesn't really matter if it's not exactly following the same path. But what we want to do is to move it to the side a little bit like that. So it overlaps. Let me just make it transparent so you can see it. So it overlaps here at the bottom a lot more than it does on the side. So this is what we want. Okay, now let's turn the line back to full opacity and blur it. And you can play, of course, with the blur values a little bit. And what we want to do is select both these elements and simply mask them together. So yeah, we're arriving at something that's kind of there, but not quite. But the good thing is that you can now modify that shadow as you see fit. So I can, for example, drag the top handle a little bit to the left. So this starts to disappear now. Okay, and now let's add an inner shadow here because this is like the, the larger part of the shadow, but we want an inner shadow as well. And we want that inner shadow to be somewhere here and then going mostly from the bottom like this. And then let's blur it too. It might take a little bit of tweaking, but don't worry, we'll get there. Now we want to create a highlight at the top. And as you can see, this highlight here is basically a little bit of like a shape that's slightly blurred, just a little bit. So I'm going to create a new line like this. Yeah, kind of like that. Make it white. Make sure that it's within the mask group and then blur it. And we might have to decrease the blur size a little bit. And now when we want to hide, for example, that part here a little bit, we can do it by creating an oval, picking the background color that we already have, making sure that it's on top of everything, and then blurring that. Or if you prefer, you can just use inner shadows, but in that case, we're going to need another smaller one. 
with a little bit less blur. But still, that little highlight requires its own element here. So this is how it looks like next to the original. But obviously, once we start adding the elements, it's going to look a little bit more similar. And also, you might tweak the color a little bit just to see if it maybe matches it better with the shadow already applied to it. OK, now let's create these buttons here. So just going to create a circle on top of them. And that initial circle will be the buttonhole. So basically just going to pick the color from around the button here. Now duplicate that circle, but this time we want to, to just have the button. Yeah, so something like this. Now for the color, I'm going to pick it from the middle. This is actually pretty important. Now let's add two inner shadows. So one is going to be at x equals zero, but it's going to be coming from the bottom like this. And we might even decrease the blur. And the other one is going to be opposite. So it will be coming from the top, probably less blurry and lighter. Sorry, not this one, this one. And of course you need to tweak the opacity of that. So it kind of looks like the effect that we want here. And now we can just create this little triangle. Turn off the borders and then use a fill. It can be from one of the top ones. But since this element is actually indented a little bit, make sure that it's not fully black. So let's just make it maybe a little bit gray and add an inner shadow to it. Just make sure that that inner shadow is actually more from the bottom side and with like a very small blur. And we, what we might do here is to make it more realistic. We can round the corner just a little bit. Duplicate the button multiple times, but the only thing that we're gonna rotate here is actually just the arrow here. And also make sure to modify the shadow direction. So like this, this goes to this side. So now it's going to be probably one on the X axis and zero on Y. Optically in the center as always. And now we can simply flip this around. And just like that, we have ourselves the buttons here. This one should be pretty simple now. So just a new rectangle, rounding the corners just slightly. And we can actually copy that style or the properties of the buttons that we already have because they are pretty similar. So the only difference here is that this circle in the middle is using a similar style to the arrows that we have like this. It's just a little bit smaller. Okay, it's, yeah, it's close enough. So this is somewhere here. We're going to properly align it on the actual element in a minute. These buttons are a little bit extruded, so we need to add a tiny bit of a shadow just right under them. So what I'm going to do here is just create an ellipse, pick the part of the color from the background here, like that and blur this and we just want a little bit of blur so maybe like three and now once we move it under the buttons well actually let's grab and take the buttons away from this okay now that's gonna be better so once we move this under the button like that we, we might have to enlarge it a little bit just so it looks good. It's subtle, but it's already looking more realistic, more like the real thing here. So now this is going to be simple too, because we already have that shape. So just kind of created again from, from this. 
And now for the joystick. So I'm just gonna duplicate this thing again, but this time without that little background and without the arrow. And yeah, what we want to start with is making this oval bigger. Put it to the side. Make another one that's smaller in the middle. Like that. And we might want to fill it with a gradient now. So the top color is going to be coming from here. Then the bottom one is going to be darker. And we might change this gradient to actually be radial as well. So now we don't want that top inner shadow here at all. Or actually, let's just switch it to a dark one now. Okay, and now the next step is to do a half circle. So I'm just gonna take this circle here and use the scissors tool to just kind of remove two parts of it. But you can just create a half circle, like whatever you want. And I'm just gonna make it into an outline and now that outline is going to be white and I'm gonna make sure that the corners of it are rounded and a tiny bit brighter and now let's duplicate this again but this time let's make make it a little bit bigger and place it here near the top like that and duplicate it again Rotate it like this and make it into a black one. And I believe you already know what we're going to be doing here. First of all, I'm going to blur this just a little bit less. Now I'm going to blur this part. And now I'm going to blur this part and then decrease the blur a little bit. So the only thing that's left to do here is to grab that little circle on top of everything and just kind of hide these down towards the middle a little bit so that effect will be vanishing here on the sides and then for the other one we do the exact same thing So just move it a little bit towards the center. And of course, it's not exactly that effect, but it's more of a, of a way of handling it. So right now we can play with the colors of everything just to be sure that it looks good enough. And also with the opacities of everything. So you can decrease the opacity of, of all those elements, really. And you can maybe make another one, a copy, and tweak them. So just duplicating a couple of them just a little bit so the effect looks more like what we want here. Okay, and now for this element, and this is pretty interesting, so I'm just gonna create a new rectangle. It's just going to be easier with a rectangle. Fill it with black or almost black and then create another one and fill it with a slightly lighter color, but it can actually be pretty dark too, like this. And now let's place it on top of our main element. And let's round the top corner, just this one. So now let's rotate it around. Drag it here to the bottom. Duplicate the group, rotate them around again. And if it doesn't look right on the sides here, you can flip them horizontally because sometimes the perspective just works better that way. Okay, and we got ourselves the joystick. And obviously it's not 
completely identical, but there wasn't really the point to make it like a hundred percent. It's like at a first glance, this looks like a Nintendo Switch and that, that was our goal here. So this is just a quick exercise. We might go into more advanced techniques later, but of course we need a shadow for this too. So I'm just gonna pick one of the colors from here. Place it somewhere here and then blur it just a little. And you can add another one, just make it smaller and hide it a little bit more underneath. Because ultimately it's the shadows that, that create the entire illusion here. And we can also create an oval like this. It can even be the main color, just blur it and mask it with that inner circle here. And now you can move it more to the top and then play around with the opacity until the effect is closer to what you want it. Yeah, so once we place it over here, it actually looks like a Nintendo Switch. And the good part is that once you have all the elements like this created, you can flip this around and just replace the color. Well, and obviously if we have a little ellipse overlay like this, we can replace that too. And then you can grab the buttons and the joystick Move it onto the new one. Move it more to this side again. And simply place things in the right spot. And with the skills that you already have, you should be able to recreate the other buttons here. And with the skills that you already have, you should be able to recreate the remaining buttons like this home button here and the plus. So let's turn this back on and we can also make the triggers. So I'm just going to create a new rectangle around this size. And now this corner is going to be slightly rounded. this corner is going to actually just stick out a tiny bit like that and it's also going to be a little bit rounded and now with this corner we're simply going to kind of place it like this because this is not completely uniform it actually sticks out a little bit more towards the top and now we can just grab the style or the properties of our buttons and just paste them onto the trigger. This is just a beginner's approach. I'm gonna speed up the remaining part of this process because I think that now you'll be able to do it yourself too. Some blurred shape, proper gradients and some inner shadows here and there. In a couple of places in this design, I actually took some shortcuts and I did this on purpose because I don't want to overwhelm you with too much fidelity. Now, that wasn't hard, was it? Knowing these things will really help you push your work to the next level. And while you're on the next level, make sure to subscribe to this channel and as always, have a beautiful day. Uh -huh.